that if you know that you are a product of mercy, stand up on your feet and touch your chest three times. Say, God, thank you for I am a product of mercy. Hallelujah. Without mercy, we would have all begun. Do you know why? The Lord said, if God will count iniquity, who shall stand? Psalm 130, verse 3 and 4. Psalm 133 and 4. Psalm 130. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? If you are the one who will stand, stand up. Let me see. If God will mark iniquity, who, who will be able to stand? Would anybody be exempted? So, practically, we are products of mercy. David said, In sin did my mother do what? Conceive, conceive me. And I was shaping in what? In iniquity. So you're coming into the world naturally. You came into the world as a sinner. It's only the coming of the Lord Jesus into the world and accepting to die for us on the cross of Calvary that saved us and gave us the privilege of standing before the Lord. Now once we stand, we stand as the children. Nobody was born a child of God. But the acceptance of Jesus into your life as Lord and Savior is what gives you the grace to become a child of God. The message of God is what has saved us. You know there are people who are especially they sit in their houses, sit in their cars, and they complain about everyone. Look at this one, look at this one. And the Bible said, O oh fool, why not remove the log, the wood, the plant in your eye? Before you will see the moth, the little thing in the eye of somebody. They shall be surprises when we get to heaven. But my prayer for us, may we get there. Now when we eventually get there, I begin to see the surprises. But if you don't get there, that will be a shameful thing. Do everything to make sure you get there. I don't allow the world, the friends, and everything around to deceive you. Verse 4. But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. There is forgiveness with who? When you offend God and genuinely come back to him. And the Lord practically displayed it on the cross when he was dying. You remember the two people that died with him? What were the offenses? They were thieves. It's what, I think this one, there was no cheating in their stealing. They stole and they shared the goods equally. So there was no cheating. And they were crucified at the same time. One to the left and one to the right. I'm sure at the time the, the mother of James and John saw them. <laughs> He said, God, thank you that Jesus didn't answer the prayer. He was asking that one of my sons will be to the left and one to the right. Where you get where? In heaven, I mean. Now, on Jesus' way to heaven, how did he arrive there? Through the cross. Am I correct? So, if Jesus had answered the prayer, where would I have been James? To the left. And John, you go. And what would be the condition? Where? On the cross, and their mother will be seeing them dying. Do you think she will be happy? Mary, the mother of Jesus, the meaning of the word Mary means Mara, bitterness. She had bitterness of soul because she saw her son Jesus die on the cross. So the mother of somebody's children didn't know what she was asking for. And that shows us that it is not every prayer we we'll pray that should be answered. Did you hear me? There is not every prayer. That you pray that should be answered. And when they are not answered, know that God is still faithful. He knows the reason. Why would God give a child what will kill him? God knows that if giving you this, he will kill you. And God said, No, I won't give you. Hallelujah. God said, Wait. Now, these two thieves that died on the cross committing the same offense, did the two of them go the same way? No, that is why you see it is possible for a girl and a boy. To commit immorality. The boy may be hardened. 
the boy may have soft heart. He will immediately repent. Are you hearing me? And if two of them die in an accident at the process, what will happen? Where will the boy go? Where will the girl go? No, where will the boy go? No, the boy that is hardened will go to heaven. Is that how you are judging? The hardened boy will go to where? The girl who repented will go to where? We go to heaven. Yes. But in the eyes of men, how are we going to judge them? Now they've all gone to hell. That is why we're talking about mercy. You don't be in a hurry to judge and do not allow yourself to be deceived by anybody. Be all asking for God's help. So what happened to the two things is a lesson to us that two people can get involved in a thing. One will be saved and the other will not. Didn't you see it when the Pharisees caught a, man, a woman caught in adultery? And where was the man? The man was nowhere to be found. Though God was not involved in the judgment of the Pharisees. Because our God is a just God. What are we saying, brethren? We are here today, born again because God has shown us mercy. Like I said to us, there's some of my age mates, I'm here preaching. They don't even know what it means to be born again. Some of my friends in the past who go to church, but they just go for purpose of religion that I must belong to one of the two major religions in Nigeria. They just come into the church and after the service they go. Some of them from the church, they go to the bar. And they have not accepted Christ. So the joy of salvation that we have is a gift from God. It's a gift from who? And I were grateful to him. We thank him. It is not the works of our hand. God has shown us mercy. Can't you see a woman in the book of John chapter 4 that was married several times? How many men has she married? Eh? Five. And that one was not the last two. She was actually planning for the sixth one when Jesus met her. He said, go and a simple statement. Go and call your husband. And the woman was smart. She said, I don't have a husband. Waiting for what Jesus will say. Jesus said, you have spoken the truth. He said, ah, the truth in me. He said, but the one you are staying with now is not your real husband. So you have married one, two, three, four, five. Ah! The woman gave her life to Christ. She ran to the city. Come and see a man that told me everything about my life that I've ever done. It was the mercy of God. If not, how can you marry five husbands? The Sadducees that were looking for a man who married and died and his brother, they should have gone and asked Jesus, this practical one in heaven, this woman who will be her husband among the five four. But they didn't go. Because they were looking, just, just looking for trouble. But you know what met her was the message of God. They reverse the story of her life. When mercy meets you, your story changes. And I know that this mercy is meeting somebody this morning. Amen. And because of that, your story shall be changed. Amen. And mercy means when doctors say you're going to die, and everybody's waiting for a baby, and God said no. And God's no is final. When everyone is condemning you, you're a criminal, and suddenly you change. I know our mercy is so strong. You may be a witch, you have killed 1,000 persons. And suddenly, the mercy of God meets you. And the 1,000 persons you've killed, many of them may have gone to hell. But you will repent. Where will you be? In heaven. Look at the story, which I think some of us must have heard. A boy and a girlfriend were moving somewhere. And they made a church like ours on evangelism. And the people of evangelism brought handbill and, and I already got handbill and, and, and text, tracts. Please take, repent. And the girl dragged the boy. Say, leave them alone. This is, this is the deceiver. Leave them. Let's go. Leave them. And the foolish boy followed the girl. They didn't go far. A car ran over the boy. And the boy died. Hey. The girl looked at the venue of the program on the handbill. In the evening of the program, wait. Other call was made. She came out and gave her life to Christ. 
and the boy was in the mortuary. Where did the boy go to? What of the girl? And she went to heaven. You can see how mercy is. You are a product of mercy. I am a product of mercy. May we remain in Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 107, 17 to 20. Psalm 107, 17 to 20. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquity, what happened to them? They are afflicted. Affliction, troubled. Humbled, yes. They are so abhorred all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gate of death. To the point that they are meant to die. Then, by reason of God's mercy, what did they do? They cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he severed them out of their distresses. Someone who is already at the close of the gate of death cry, and God gave life. Are you at the gate of death crying? May the Lord deliver you out of your distress. Amen. May he deliver you out of destruction. May he show you mercy. For the Bible says, what brought about affliction upon a man is what? Transgression and iniquity. But the people cry. It's only God that may cry by the reason of the iniquity that God answered. But for a man, a man will enjoy you. Because he say, so after I cut my leg, I'm not come to beg. So that I won't have one leg, Abby. Now me and you. Just go for it. Just go. I've heard, just go. Just go. But God will not tell you to just go. God will want to attend to you and show you mercy. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, I depend on your mercy. Without your mercy, I am finished. Show me mercy. I don't want to sleep. Show me mercy. In the name of Jesus. Can you hear your email? Then verse 20. Verse 20. He said his word and did what? And hear them. And deliver them from their destruction. The word of God is coming over you this morning. To deliver you from every form of destruction. Amen. To set you free and bring healing to your body. Amen. To purify your spirit and make you happy. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Irrespective of your wickedness and all of that. God is sent for the word. As he's doing this morning. God is sending for the word of God. And healing is taking place. I say healing is taking place. And this morning, by the mercies of God, that thing that is designed to keep you in one place, God is bringing you out of it. Amen. It is only the mercies of God. The Bible said, by strength, shall no man prevail. It is the mercy of God that come and meet a man who had perpetually suffered for typhoon and the breeze of the Spirit of God will just pass and the thing will be over. Twelve years of typhoon will be gone and be gone forever. For everyone who has consistently suffered typhoid, suffered malaria, by the mercies of God, I put a stop to it. I wish your amen can be louder than this. I wish you know that God is speaking to you. Now, when I go back home yesterday after the power night, I was praying. I say, all the young people who raise their hand to be delivered from lesbianism and from what is it called, from masturbation. I know they were having evil sexual dream and traceable to their reading pornography. If they were not in church, how would they have been delivered? How would they have been delivered? All that, these are acts of mercy. And I repeat again, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare, everyone who has been consistently sick of typhoid or malaria, today, by the mercies of God, I put an end to those sicknesses. I say, I put an end to those sicknesses. Every form of harassment you are having from the enemy, I put an end to them in the name of Jesus. May God confirm the world where he said, your body is his living temple, and darkness and light cannot stay together. Satan's sickness has no right over your body. By the message of God, I declare you free. I declare you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 18, 9 to 4. Luke 18, 9 to 4. The story of two persons who went to prayer. He spoke this parable 
unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. And that's what we have. Self righteousness destroys a man. What did I say? You come up and say, Who is this? Who is this? Where are you coming from? I know my life. I'm not like you. Oh, who told you they're not like him? No man can be saved by his own righteousness. And what we take people to hell is not their sin, but their refusal to accept the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. It is when you refuse that your sin cannot take you to hell. There are people who say, I'm a virgin, I've never known a man. I've never taken one single alcohol. What you're saying is the truth. But have you accepted Jesus into your life? Because you will be there, those who were born, their father was drunk. And their mother was drunk when, she, when he pregnanted the father. So the child possibly was born intoxicated. Did you hear me? <laughs> the child was born what? Intoxicated. That child will grow and become a child of God. When you who have not tasted one bottle of alcohol, we go to hell. You will go to hell with your virginity. If that's what you're riding in. And I'm a virgin, I've never known a man. Oh, fine. It is good for you not to, know the, to, have known the, to have known a man. But it's also good for you to consciously accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. And the people said, eh? verse, no, go back to verse 9. Go back to that verse 9. The Bible says, and he spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. Where is your trust? That they were righteous. And because of that, they despised others. Verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, that is a self-righteous man. And the other a publican, a sinner that has not yet accepted Christ, who does not go to church. The Pharisee stood and prayed those with himself. Oh God, I thank thee. And I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even at this publican. That's prayer. He was in the place of prayer. He said, even as this publican who is praying, who calls himself a pastor, who calls himself an elder, I am not like them, oh God. And you know, the Pharisees stood and prayed also. They said, God, I thank you that I am not as other men are. They collect people's money by force. They are unjust. They are adulterers. They are fornicators. Even as this publican. Yes, verse 12. I fast twice in the week. I don't miss the three days of fasting. I give my tithe. Of all that I possess, I pay them all. I support the church. Go and check the record of the last convention. I supported it very well. Verse 13. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. The man was feeling guilty, but smooth upon his breast, saying, God, do what? Be merciful to me, a sinner. The Bible said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be what? Shall be abased. And he that humbled himself shall be exalted. I am not saying you should go and commit sin and come back and be exalted. No! But anytime you appear before God, know that your righteousness is like a filthy rag before the Lord. Now, do you know what a filthy rag is? I don't know. Is there any woman here? But I know of my mother. But is there any woman who grew up? I, you didn't start using pad immediately. That you started using pieces of cloth. Is there anyone here? Eh? Is there any? Nobody? Okay, yeah. But you know, in those days, before the era of comfort pad, and always, and the rest of them like that. What women use is pieces of wrapper. They put it to collect the blood. And when they finish, most times, they throw it away. Are, are you hearing me? That rag that is thrown away with the stain of human, human blood, that dog play with around, that is what the Bible, that menstrual cloth, that's what the Bible calls filthy rag. So when you are claiming self-righteousness, the Bible says that your righteousness is like a menstrual rag. Meaning that you are very unacceptable before man and before God. So all you need to do at all times is to accept the blood of Jesus Christ and ask him for mercy at all times. Because mercy 
will give you what ordinarily you will not get on your own. And that's what God had done for us. Hallelujah. So please, I'd like you to know as a random that we are products of mercy and not of our righteousness. The Bible said that it is the gift of God. That it is what? It is what? And don't forget what the Lord said to Moses in Romans 9, 14 to 18. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Me, God's freedom to demonstrate mercy is not limited by anything but his divine choice. He chooses to show mercy. Is there not, is there not possible that husband and wife who are married, covenanted in marriage, come to church, had the same message? One is born again, one, the other one, it teaches you in Colantum, not born again. Is it not possible? Is it not possible that identical twins will be in church? One will be born again and the other will not born, be born again. So what do you think? God said, I will have mercy on whom I will have what? Mercy. I will have mercy on whom I will have what? Mercy. So anytime you experience this God's blessing, please go on your knees and thank the Lord. At all times, at all times, the children that God gave you, are they not products of mercy? How do you produce them? Eh? How? There are people who have tried everything. When you see people that got children through IVF, oh, it's mercy of God. Because I've seen a woman I went to teach in a Bible school. And the woman came to tell me, they work at the villa. The president gave them money several days. How many times? Five times. How many times? How many times? Five times for IVF. Five times they try. Of course, you know that IVF being directed by the presidency, they won't go to local one in worry. Look, in worry, they do 300. Yes, worry is a wonderful place. There are people who have learned it. And it's working for them. Small girls around, they just start to <laughs> Mommy, you want to, okay, we will send you next week to go and check, do documentary on worry IVF. <laughs> But then you have to release it. Sorry. You don't have water there. Somebody should give her water. I shall bring water for her. And she will buy us one roll after the service. Hallelujah. Now, but the final thing is that, and very painful is that, some of these IVF cost as much as one five. Five times, all of them dropped. You know how painful it is? So what are we saying in church? When you have children... Give thanks to God. How many of you remember the story I told you about? How many abortion? Eh? And after that, she got married. She had how many children? Ah, uh-uh. what are you doing here? I as a church in the I church Nikki. Meaning that is my church now. Ah, uh-uh. what are you doing? I remember that. I saw people they are very funny and very strong. As I'm doing that, I should do it. So I remember here now. Ah, I will refer. I and I will return to thee. Yeah, Rafa. I will bring you about the good attack. I said, What of marriage? God has given me eight children. And funny when she called them. And all of them gather. How many children? Mommy, you want, if you are God, after 30 abortion, will you give eight children? You will take the fire and say, go and look for those who have not got it. Let's give them one word. Can't shake here. So that you have not done anything. You will abuse the person. But that's the mercy of God. Please, if you understand mercy, there's nothing you cannot get. But if you don't understand mercy, have you not seen people, first class candidates, they just tell us that they have brain fog. They read, oh! They read! Ah! You don't understand what mercy is. If you understand, you give God praise. Some people will say, what, what did this man see in this woman that went to marry her? This woman is ugly. If you are not going out, if you are going out, you would have heard that they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. You are not beholding very well. That's why you see her ugly. That's why you see her the way you see her. Somebody will labor and labor and labor and labor. He will load from here to area one and load as soon as he gets to look where the car will spoil. He will balance everybody's money and from the one he realized, he will go and repair the car. You don't understand what mercy is. You don't understand. Somebody will enter an error. You never are looking for a house. By the time you see one house, they tell you they're just remaining the light, pay the money. That they will give you the house. You will just pay the money. Both the landlord and the house, you won't see. Someone said those house disappear. 
If a man who claims to be owner of the house is no longer the owner, they just told you they have sold the house. Is it, have you not heard before? They have sold the house. You tell the new landlord, give me my money. Say, did I write the receipt for you? Go and meet the man. It's not like acquiring assets and liabilities. It's buying up a house. I like you to say it yourself. I am a product of mercy. I just kneel down and say, God, thank you. You know you have done something that would have killed you. You have complained about the man of God. You have said something about God that ordinarily would have died, but the mercy of God kept you. He kept me. He kept me. I know what joy that fills my soul. Something Go sing that song and then pray. And say, God, thank you for your mercy. People die during childbirth, but you gave back to four children. They are alive watching you. A man, a woman spoke against a man of God and stone entered her stomach. You have spoken and God showed you mercy. Something. shall be recovered. I'd like you to pray to God. Thank you for your message. Show me more of your mercy by this communion. Jesus, you died on the cross of Calvary. You poured out your blood. You battered your skin, your flesh for our sake. We we'll receive this as your flesh. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On the cross, you poured out your blood for the remission of our sins. We we'll receive this. Lord, if anyone is here, a girl, a boy, a man or a woman, that the devil is speaking again and accusing of what you have done and holding you back by the power of this blood, I release the person. And I recover for the person. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I declare by the eternal word that everyone that is partake in this communion, both in the first and second service, such one shall not die prematurely. Amen. The mercy of God shall keep all of us. Amen. In the name of God the Father, Amen. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen.